ask me to read this letter instead of writing it so i'm gonna read it as quick as possible because it's kind of like a long letter it says dear julius malema of the eff i have seen your twitter account where you lambasted our people for breaching the corona virus lockdown or shutdown assuming that the twitter account is real and it belongs to you i will now respond trust me it took me some time writing this message because I struggle with grammar and especially the prepositions. Even during this letter, I might make or I may make spelling errors and please pardon me. You want the government that if the shutdown is not enforced 100%, it will collapse. And you emphasize that uh, essential workers should be at least less restricted. But what is essential? It's a moot point because every worker will argue that his job or her job is essential because we all know that all jobs are serving the public or the community and all jobs either they are product driven or service driven. So, during this lockdown, I had the privilege of watching my former colleagues in the acting industry, entertainment industry. I've watched them on TV and they've been keeping us entertained during these tough times. All of a sudden, they are now essential. Yes, I take coronavirus very seriously, even though I cannot compare it to AIDS. Maybe it is worse than AIDS, I don't know. But maybe my fears for it are too greater. Look, the poor of this country did not invite the coronavirus into our land. But it is your friends in government and business. Your friends who visited non-essential destinations in Europe, Asia, and everywhere this year and last year. One of your ministers in a honeymoon could not even remember whether she was in Switzerland or Geneva, where she said she was not in Switzerland, but Geneva, and then continued to travel to United States just recently. Hmm. In these days of Corona, another MP from Western Cape, the DA MP, went to Europe just a few weeks ago and he brought us Corona here. Reverend Mushwe of the Christian Democratic Party did something unchristian. He brought Corona again. He went to, me, to meet Bloomfontein uh, churchgoers against government social distancing directives that was culpably wrong and helping corona to spread maybe the bible should have included the 11th commandment and said thou shall not infect other children for weeks and months our public and people they've been begging ramaphosa asking him to introduce a travel ban, especially from those countries that pose serious risk for China, Italy, United States, Iran. But no, your president said they got the situation under control. And weeks later, travel ban. I wonder what has changed. But I would not you I would not expect you to uh, understand that or accept that because I know that your love for foreigners and open borders, yeah, is unquestioned. Even though you are silent, or you are silent when foreigners, Nigerians, kidnap our girl children. Ninety-nine percent of Zimbabweans here they are innocent. Are people that you don't need. They add no value, no skill skills. They're criminals. Hmm? We've got all sorts of criminals here coming into this country, 
Israeli mafia, Pakistani mafia, East European mafia. They are here running this country into a wasteland similar to Cuba in the late 50s. I know that I'll be labeled xenophobic by your followers, but it is okay. Yeah, I will die by my words. And I will repeat, most foreigners in South Africa add no value. They are rendering this country useless and holding our people hostage. Now, you say the lockdown. You said the, the lockdown and are, uh, those who violate the lockdown or shutdown, they need to be arrested if they are not essential. Most South Africans, they are forced to go into the streets and they are ready to hustle. They don't have the luxury of friends like Mazoti, the alleged cigarette smuggler, kingpin mafia, friend of yours, or Brett Kerbal, who financed majority of the ANC Youth League members and others in the ANC. Majority of the people in South Africa, they don't have parliamentary packages and privileges and salaries. And they did not receive salaries since they were not hustling but locked down inside their houses while you and your friends received probably your full salary, not slashed. And I remember in 2014, you said when you came into parliament, you will not participate in receiving those parliamentary grants like food, medical aid, housing allowances. But I guess now it's not easy when you are inside. Like you said in the Prapata show that you are fighting capitalism from within when he asked you on her TV show about your watch valued at 250k he asked you again about your Santin house worth 3.5 million. The house that you destroyed voluntarily, you destroyed that house. There was nothing wrong with it. And you built a house worth 16 million rands. A socialist would probably, maybe, would have given that house away or sold that house and gave the proceeds or give the proceeds to the poor. Hmm? Majority of our people, they hustle. They're not employed by government. They don't work for the government. If they don't hustle, they don't eat. And the longer the shutdown continues, the more they suffer. And indications shows that the lockdown might be extended. Might be extended. And I find it amazing that even whites who hates you so, 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 they're now agreeing, agreeing with you on this issue of the lockdown. Because why? They are scared of corona. In their mind, corona is black, like we've seen in the media. Majority of the people who went outside the country, they are white. They never showed their faces like they showed HIV at the later stage, when it was now beginning to affect black people. Now they're showing black people and majority of the whites, they think that, oh, these poor guys from Soweto, they'll come to send in and infect us. So that's why they agree with you and say, shut them down. When are they know that they've got big yards? They've got big yards. Hmm? They can afford playing soccer inside their yards, walk their dogs, jog, gym, do all sorts of things. Majority of the people in townships are plumbers, lawyers, teachers, car mechanics, and et, and et cetera. All these guys are essential. My car right now it gave me an indication that says it needs service. I can't take it anywhere. And I don't have the luxury to jump into another car like you. You probably will jump from Range Rover to a BMW 7 Series. Mm. I don't have that luxury. Mm. It comes to funerals. How to implement that lockdown? 
Imagine 50 people or less than 100 attending a funeral in Soweto where they have to close down the coffin, literally. Hmm? Let's say 60% of those people are women and elders. And it's not so long, my funeral is around by two or three. The emphasis should be on making sure that there is no transmission That's where the emphasis should be. And this shutdown, it's wearing heavy. It's going to wear heavy on the people of this country. And I wonder what will be the outcome. Because they'll go out there hustling. And I wonder what will our security agents do? Shoot them down? Is that what you're suggesting? Hmm? As like I said earlier on, that the emphasis should be on social distance, even though we know that social distance is very difficult in townships like Alexander, Deep Slot, because this government has not improved the lives of our people. The lives of our people are still the same. And after shutdown, what will happen? We'll still be back to where we were or we were. Like Zwedem Kiza said, that, you know, the bodies will pile up. We have no cure. We are not looking for one. We are not even asking China for one. Hmm? Yeah, that is that. But in a nutshell, as you have seen billionaires, donating their monies or our monies from our minds that they found here where our grandparents have been enslaved for centuries of years. Why is it that parliamentarians are not donating anything? I'm sure they can sacrifice one month's salary. They will recover like you. I'm sure. You still got some of the money in the Ratanang Trust. You've got foundations. Sacrifice one salary. Give it to the poor. All of you, just, you know, agree in your You know what? We'll buy, you know, sanitizers, stuff like that, masks, and give it to the poor, homes, stuff like that. Let us all feel this shutdown. But I tell you, this 100% shutdown it will weigh heavy on our people. I, for one, I'm saying, if it is applied, it must be applied with restrictions. Not 100%. Let people move, work, you know, with certain hours and come back. Maybe after hours, maybe they'll be told that, you know, from 6 o'clock, you're not in the streets if you're not coming from work. Stuff like that. You can be creative. But as for you, to say that people must stay inside their houses, knowing the conditions of our people, we got recyclists, hmm? hawkers, people selling clothes, the mechanics, teachers, lawyers. I'm sure teachers will be earning their salaries, but I'm talking about people who are self-employed, independent people, not people uh, spoon-fed or those people who are employed by big companies. Even some of the small medium companies, they will not afford paying salaries endlessly for work not done. Yeah, but that's the essence of the letter. Did not read everything, but someone challenged me and say, I must put it in words. And someone said, I hate the EFF. I don't hate the EFF. I like them. They have raised very crucial points and they've changed the landscape of our politics. Hence, I'm very tough on them. I'm not going to be a praise singer. I'm not a bully. If you like something or you love something so much, you must be tough on it and critique it. Otherwise, you'll be making the supreme ruler of Korea, and we don't want that.